The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. What's up there, my reading friend? I am on with my bread and butter today. A book review on The Gunslinger by Stephen King. Please take a moment to like and subscribe if you're a constant reader. Let's get right into this thing. This is the first installment in the Dark Tower series by Stephen King, which is an epic low-end fantasy series, a primarily seven book series, with some additions and some other add-ons that we're going to get into, my friends. This book is about a gunslinger named Roland and his quest for the Dark Tower. The Dark Tower is the linchpin of existence. Throughout all the worlds and universes and dimensions of space and time, at the center of all of them stand the Dark Tower, and the gunslinger in this novel has to get there. It's been his lifelong mission to get there. Not even sure why he's going there, but he knows that he wants to get there at all costs, by all means. And this is his adventure. It starts out in a desert, and this series of books is a merger of genres. This installment is a fantasy, but it's also kind of like a western, and it's even suspenseful, and it's even got elements of science fiction in it. Stephen King has done something unlike anything else I have ever read with this series of books, and it's really phenomenal because characters from other King books come into this. You read something by Stephen King, you think it's standalone, you read the Dark Tower series, and you find out that that book holds a very important piece in the series. Roland of Gilead meets many characters throughout this. He assembles a team of people to help him get to that tower. By the way, my friends, check out my shirt. It's like an old NES cartridge. Isn't that neat? I got that uh, recently. It's my favorite shirt now. Uh, anyway, let's get back onto the quest for the tower. Roland meets a lot of people, and he kills a lot of people, and it's very important that he does get to the Dark Tower. What Roland doesn't understand when he steps into the desert in this novel is that the Crimson King, the primary antagonist in this series, who's a powerful demon, plans on collapsing the tower. He wants to destroy the tower and the beams that hold it up so that he can completely annihilate reality. He just wants to blank everything and basically disappear the universe and all the universes. And Roland has to get there and stop him. And I really love this series because the landscape is broad. When you read an epic fantasy series, the scope is huge, and there are characters, a many, and motives, and things are taking place over long periods of time. So it's really something that you can get lost in. There are actually two available versions of this. We have the original version, and we have the updated revised version. And the difference between the two is about 35 additional pages that King added. You see, Stephen King originally wrote this as a teenager. He published it when he was 19. And it was originally published in installments in magazines. And he ended up taking those, bringing them together, and writing an ending for the novel and published it as the gunslinger. What is so awesome about the Stephen King universe, my friends, and one of the reasons that I absolutely love Stephen King, is that many of his other books come into this, and some of them in a very minor way, just a mention of the tower in a stray Stephen King book, and that'll bring a smile to your face as a tower junkie. But some of the books are absolutely foundational for the series. For example, I recently finished reading Black House by Stephen King, which is not a book in the series, but it's all about the Crimson King trying to kidnap children, one particular child who is a psychic. 
He's a beam breaker. You see, there are beams that hold the Dark Tower up, and the Crimson King is trying to wreck those beams so that the tower will fall, and Black House is all about the beam breakers and the king and a gunslinger named Jack Sawyer. And I'll mention Low Men in Yellow Coats, which is a novella in Hearts in Atlantis, which is a compilation of stories. And that one is all about a beam breaker named Ted Brodigan, who escapes from a prison in the Dark Tower series. And it's all about his story about being on the run and the Crimson King's henchmen, the low men, hunting him down. So you see that Stephen King not only wrote a seven primary book epic fantasy series, there are bits and pieces and parts to it all over the map in the Stephen King universe. And the examples I mentioned are not all, my friends. There are short stories and novellas that really go into this further, and I absolutely love it because of that. This book actually begins with a recurring character, Randall Flagg. He is the man in black. The man in black fled across the desert. That's how this book begins, how the series begins. Randall Flagg is actually the antagonist from The Stand. He's also the antagonist in Gwendy's Button Box. So this is really unique and awesome. And he's not the only character that's recurring. There are recurring characters aplenty in this series. This book takes place in the fantasy landscape of Midworld. Roland of Gilead is the last gunslinger, and he's known since he was a child that he wants that dark tower and that he'll do anything to get there. And this story, this book and series, is his story. It's his quest. And it's about the people that he takes with him to get to that tower and see what is going on. And I absolutely loved it. This book is something that I've thought about for many years. Every day since I've read it, I've thought about it. And this book has had such an impact on me, this series has, that I will think about it every day for the rest of my life until I die. There's so much going on in this series. A lot of themes are covered through a lot of different characters and places. Good versus evil, the quest for knowledge, obsession, survival, time travel. I've read this book three times. It's one of three books that I've done a reread on. I've happened to read the second installment, The Drawing of the Three, three times. And the rest of the books, I've read them once. I'm going to continue on my journey for the tower by reading the third book a second time. Keep your eye out for the reviews on all of these books. I really love this series and I want to cover it in depth. I know that a lot of people that have read this series weren't the biggest fan of book one in comparison to the other books, but I absolutely loved this one. I think it's a great introduction to what's going on, and I think that it's fairly short, easy read, and I think it's just brilliant. It's really a surprise to me that Stephen King was a teenager when he wrote it, and now it's blown up to be my favorite story in a huge bestseller. If you've seen the movie and it's preventing you from wanting to take on the books, I'll tell you that the movie was a different plot. Now, many movies change some things, they leave some things out, but the plot's still there. With the Dark Tower movie, the plot was completely changed. So I recommend if you didn't like the movie or you think that you wouldn't like this series because of the movie, to just forget about the movie and read The Gunslinger. Please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell if you don't mind, if you haven't already. Keep your eye out for upcoming reviews on all the books in this series and some other videos I want to do on this series, taking a close look at some of the things that happen. And I'm going to read some other epic fantasy series and cover them here on my channel. I thank you for the support and I will see you next time, my friend.